Welcome back guys. Now, when I finished this video two days ago, or was it yesterday? I said we were done for the winter, yeah? Because we'd obviously coated the top. Well, nothing's ever easy. I made a bit of a faux pas, to say the least. Well, not that I realised I was making a faux pas at the time. See, we're on the next level down, as you know. Now, the trouble with that is, is where I fixed this level to the wall, I fixed it directly over the top of the sill of the window underneath. Which actually means the sill comes up behind these. Well, what's the big deal about that, you might think? This window down here, on the next level down, the top part of the frame and the two top sashes has got to come out completely and be boarded over. I can't get to that because this is in the way. And then, if we go up here, this set of windows here, the entire window and window frame is coming out. And there, the entire window and window frame is coming out. In order to do that, I need this off. So, um, yeah, I... The decision hasn't come lightly, um, really because of the cost of the treatment. But anyway, what I've done now is I've removed all the uprights from here and removed all, everything from this level, as you can see. And we're all now prepped for painting. So I'm going to put a base coat on this today, even though it's the afternoon, um, and hopefully spray all this along here so that I can get this next level off, which is much further than I thought I was going to be able to go for the winter. So, I mean, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. I just want to show you this because um, I prepped it. There. And uh, all I have by way of paint is what was left out of that tub from doing this section on the base coat. Um, the other tub is currently in transit, so I'm going to start by brushing it because there's no point in setting up the spray because setting up the spray don't take long, 30 minutes, but the breakdown takes a long time because of the cleaning. So I'm just going to start with a brush just in case that other tub doesn't get air in time for today. I've got to stop at some point because of uh, the low temperatures overnight, so we'll get on. Now we've prepped this side, uh, or this, this section. And uh, so, I bought this machine, and um, yeah, I was really disappointed. It, it was rubbish. I couldn't get it to work because of the big roller cover and all the safety features. Well, this morning, in frustration, I've removed all the safety features, every one of them. And that's left me with this now, you do need safety glasses, and it's advisable to wear some leather gloves. But now, that gets in everywhere where I need it to be. Whereas before, it had a big thing over the top of it, and um, I couldn't use it. So, that's aided me with prepping this. So, the, the level up I did with a wire brush on a drill like that. That's how all that was prepped. And um, that took a long time. This hour, Happy with that. Right, let's get to and do some painting. Right, here we are next morning, fully prepped. Time to spray. Can I get three coats on this small section? Yeah, it's not supposed to rain today. It's cold, but it's not gonna rain. So uh, yeah, we got the machine, the Graco 9000 down on the next level. Set up, ready to go. I've got the gun up here. And that last time, I'm going to set you up halfway and then move you.
Okay, that's the base coat on that level. Now it's starting to come. It's hard to kind of see when it's done in such small sections. That's the disadvantage of using the scaffold, but like the scaffold was pri primarily here for the renovation works. Um, but it's also, because it's here, it means uh, I can decorate on the way down. Now what we've got to do, I'm constantly walking on this end piece of scaffolding, which of course, I say of course, was completely ripped off by the ice flow down this roof last year. Um, my, my mistake, I left this post here and it all built up in this area and just tore it from the wall. So this end is just kind of hanging on. Anyway, more climbing. Could I manage without that? No. Okay. Now we've got to change change the buckets. Now how I do it, different people do it in different ways, but now I do it. So I remove my tip, like so, turn the pressure right down. Now, normally, we go and have a cup of coffee. We can get down easier if we go this way. Normally, we'd go down and have a cup of coffee, especially on a Sunday, while we're waiting for layers to dry. However, as I'm dismantling this, I'm getting ready for the next section, which is this elevation round here. So all this here, it's ready to go up to the next level. Now, there's a really good argument for the amount of work and effort. Oh, even that's undone, Christ. And climbing about on half dissembled scaffolding. That's not the brightest thing I've done. Right, so there's a good argument for painting this elevation using the sky lift like I did for the, the house. However, the score lift cost money, and um, I have repairs to do off this elevation here. So, whilst the soffits look nice, that's because 
when the score lift was here, they were so bad I whipped up there and painted them a coat of some shitty black nasty stuff, but that's not true. So these two windows here, it's easy to get out because we can get out off from the fire escape. These ones are too big and heavy and unsafe for me to do from a ladder. In addition to that, under each one of the purlins that comes out, there's woodpecker holes and the boards need replacing. And the same on this side. I'd also like to change this window up here in the attic. So I kind of got a way up having a sky lift on higher while I'm doing repairs, which is essentially a day or two or nothing. Or I have all the wood and all the screws to carry along and scaffold out this elevation. And since I have everything and everything's stacked up at the next level, in all honesty, it's a day and a half for me this time of year when I can't do much else before the snow comes to build this elevation out on the scaffolding. And that's what I'm gonna do. So, and that allows me to be able to do all the repairs to the building here. I don't even know if you can see the holes. Anyway, it allows me to do all the repairs there and paint. Um, without any additional cost of hiring equipment. And it's not just the hiring equipment. Um, somebody that, uh, uh, or a local company that I buy a lot of materials from, he does me a really good deal on that sky lift. But I've also got to go and collect it. And uh, it's two hours there, two hours back, a lot of diesel, uh, and then you've got the return trip. So um, you're into eight hours transporting the thing. Well, there's a day. Well, in a day, I can get most of that scaffold up for nothing and no diesel. So, anyway, there we go. We'll just go down our, our little alleyway here and um, get ready to put that next level up. Right, Sunday afternoon. I'll just show you where we got to. I've done a bit, not on camera, so I get the next two top coats on. And um, I've just got paint the black guttering. And I've had to wash down and clean all the windows because there was a little bit of overspray on them. So I've cleaned down, scrubbed, and then polished all the glass. All painted down to the next level. Whilst we were waiting between coats, I've just got to paint the black. Whilst we were waiting between coats, I've also done a bit more along here. Uh, I don't know if the time lapse picked it up, but when I was putting this post in, I've got to be on the ladder, hold a long bit of wood, screw, hold, level all at the same time, getting a bit dodgy. So I commissioned my lovely Sarah. Now the problem with that is, is she don't want to be on camera and you've got to respect that. And I had to get her to help me because it's Sunday and she's doing roast tonight. And we're a long way from hospital, but if you have to travel the hour and a half to the hospital on a Sunday and you get admitted because you've been stupid and you've you know, slung yourself off the scaffolding, they've already allocated uh, the food. So you're into Saturday leftovers. I didn't want Saturday leftovers on a Sunday. I wanted, you know, my lovely roast. So I had a bit of a hand. I couldn't show that bit of the scaffolding. So next job is paint up the black and then disassemble this entire level. Just like we did the level above it um, and get this down to the final level. And as we're taking it down then, we can use the materials. And because I've already started round here, we can literally drag them around the corner and carry on building. So next job is to paint the bit of black there on the downpipes 
and then keep building this level and whereas on here we just had one level up here we've got to go at least two levels up to get to the, the top and the eaves and then start fixing all these bird holes yeah. right that's the next job then One train, an absolute lifetime's worth of birch. I wouldn't need firewood ever again. Anyway, that goes for pulping. All right, where did I get to? So um, I've run out of battery power and I've run out of energy and uh, I'm gonna run out of daylight. So as always, we never get as far as we think we're gonna get. So that's, uh, that's about a quarter of it down and because we're waiting for these side rails here I haven't uh, expanded any further along so that is going to be my day today now we're still in the same place we've got to squeeze down that little hole yet so we're just going to do a little shot of this down down on the down on the bottom there from over there it coming down And then that's it going up. Come on, come. It's time to go in there. I've still got my woolly out on. Yeah, that won't come off now. Not till June. Well, unless I'm sweating, then it'll come off. Look at that view. Looks a bit of a mess now it's coming down. Anyway, served its purpose. That's it for today. Tomorrow, we're not working on that tomorrow. We've got rain coming on Wednesday. We've got two days to um, clear all the timber that I stacked up over on the other job 
And the reason for that being is last time I brought the tractor up, she nearly didn't make it. So with those back loaders, hmm, perhaps I should come up backwards. Anyway, they tip real easy. I mean, real easy. And once she starts going backwards, there's so much play in the steering. If she goes down that ditch, that's a rollover and I can do without that kind of mess right at the moment. Anyway, so there we go. That's the end of it. Thanks for watching. We'll be on hauling, hauling lumber, big lumber tomorrow. Little big trees coming out there, thankfully. So add to that pile over there. We'll all be good. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Come on. So I know I said that's the end and goodbye already. Oh, I've still got me out. But of course it ain't. Yeah, you can't just come in and sit down and then edit. Before you can do that, it's getting cold at nights now. You've got to light the boiler out of the furnace or whatever you want to call it. So, um, how are we doing on wood and winter and all of this? Well, uh, we're now, well, we can see that, that light's bright. We're 19th. Yesterday, boiler was on all day, Saturday. Um, it's only going to be on this evening, so it's a quarter. So, this is my plan of, goes back years, years and years and years. December 22nd, furnace and back water clean. Yeah. So anyway, every year I, and, and, and what this does is it, it helps me calculate how many hours I've got in the chimney to when I need to do a clean. Now, under normal circumstances, right the, here specifically, there's certain regulations on cleaning the chimney and the chimney man comes once a year to clean the flue. Well, if I only clean this flue once a year, well, we wouldn't have a building anymore. So um, what I do is I calculate how many hours of use and then I clean the chimney and I clean it from here all the way to the top. I do that all the way through the winter. And we don't go more than 30 days without full clean. Depends what we're putting up it. If you're just putting birch up it, full clean every 30 days, half clean, which is the boiler and the back flues and all the bends, every 14 days. If, like this here, we're burning all manner of crap, and this is still our summer wood. Then you need to do a full clean every two weeks if it's on all the time. So uh, I'm, I'm sure I've said in a previous video where we make hot water. I'm just I'm just getting it going at the minute. I'm just just reloading it up. We'll shut that up so we don't fill the place with smoke. Uh, current water temperature in the tanks 40 degrees. That's uh, two hours before we get 80 degrees. Maybe two and a half hours before we get 80 degrees. Before we can have a bath or shower as it is for me. And, um, and then our heating system can go on. How does this labyrinth work? Well, Fred Dibner would have been pleased. Proud, in fact. So our uh, boiler temperature's coming up now. So how are we doing wood? Right, our wood, our wood, indoor wood shed, behind this big steel door there, this is a firewall there, is, uh, is bigger than this room. It's the same width, but it's deeper. So we've started stacking out, well, we've been stacking out for, for weeks and weeks and weeks for our winter store. And we've never had it so full as this in here. That's the chute there. That's where the wood comes down. But I'm gonna fill this room completely. And there's a reason we've never done this before. Um, I have a fan running all the time because our dehumidifier broke, otherwise we'd have a dehumidifier in there. Um, is uh, uh, not knowing quite where I'm going to go with my back. If my back was to suddenly go, um, Sarah, she can't drive the tractor or get the wood from the outside to the inside. So, so that we have less time outside in the minus 25s, which is not doing us any good at all. We're gonna see what happens if we could load this room out completely. It's a bit smoky now, because uh, I've just opened the door. So there's our kindling there. And there's a mixture in here of salu, which is willow. All right, we got quite a bit of that. And then we got some pine, not good in the fire, not good at all. These are all our offcuts from the sawmill. So where we board and cube our wood, we burn everything. This is all salu, there's some birch mixed in with that. 
there's pine, fir, pine and fir really put the sap up the chimney, that's what causes the black spot. This is what will set the chimney on fire. Birch, salu, salu's good but it burns really quick, birch is the best stuff. If this room could be completely full of birch, I'd be very happy. And we do have birch down here, we'll have some. So um, there's an awful lot of, of wood in here that we would not normally put up our chimney. But because of circumstances this year, see most of this is birch. Because of the circumstances this year, I've had to get wood from wherever I can to make sure we can get through the winter. So how, how long, if this room is full up, will it last? Hmm. Depends on the outside temperatures. If we have prolonged spills below minus 30, not very long because you have to run this 24 hours a day. You have to run this 24 hours a day below, below minus 25 because uh, inside temperature reaches uh, minuses real fast overnight when this goes off. Um, so, I mean, when we first came here, before I had this lot up and running, we was minus 22 in the bedroom and you don't, you just don't want that. So uh, anyway, before we can do anything, before I can have any kind of attempt to relax, um, I've got a, you have to clean this out, put them in the ash buckets there and then light the boiler and then, uh, but so I'm on making sure everything's going right and everything's as it should be. I'll be 45 minutes to an hour down here and then I can go up and then I have to come down and feed it every hour, every hour. So in the winter, when it's below minus 25, um, this will need feeding every hour and a half, 24 hours a day. We take it in shifts. One sleeps through the day and the other one sleeps through the night or covers the night so that we can keep it going. Um, we do now, I have some here which I've not put in, we didn't, but we do now have some antifreeze in the central heating system, in the pipeworks. I've got to uh, put in a system here, as a loop system, we've got an open vent up in the top, this pipe comes down, if you fill the system it runs straight down the drain, and our antifreeze goes straight down the drain, well that's really bad. So what I'm going to do is put in two tanks here and I've got a fill loop here with this pipe and um, I'm going to do an open vented but a recirculation system so I can fill it up with a new antifreeze I've got to add more antifreeze into the system and that will stop the freezing. Last year we got away with it, the year before some pipes in the outside concrete wall froze and because this is such a huge building it's actually split into four zones, into quarters. The pipes froze and it knocked out eight radiators upstairs and we was in trouble for quite a while there and I couldn't get them thawed out. So, um, yeah, I, I had to bite the bullet two years ago and get antifreeze for the system, but it, it's watered down. I need to add more. Anyway, there we go. So before I call it the end of the day, that's coming on quite nicely. Yep. Before I call it the end of the day, um, we have to get the boiler lit and then we still can't leave this yeah, hour and 30 minutes and she needs filling up two hours. Depends what you're burning. Fill it full of birch, you get two hours, you get three hours, you might even get four hours. But with all this old stuff here, hour and a half, she's going out two hours and, and you're out. So in the dead of winter, if we go to town, we have to block it full of birch and then turn it right down and just keep it ticking over and then keeping a look because uh, otherwise, and I say otherwise, quite often when we get back, we have to relight the boiler. So um, when it's really, really, really cold, we just don't leave the building because it's just not worth it. Anyway, that is it now for today. There you go. That's the end of our summer rubbish that we've been burning, nails and all. It just, good job I renovated the chimney and put a liner and everything upside and, and know how to care for and clean it because um, the old chimney was brick and it was full of black spot. This building would have burnt down years ago without the renovations that I've done. So yeah, while it's quite dark and gloomy in here, I can assure you everything is up to par and as it should be. And these are our water tanks. And they're fully insulated, um, but will they hold temperature overnight? Yeah, but you can get the water temperature up to 80 degrees. Right, you won't get it past that. But if you then put the heating on, which you have to, that water will go down and sit at 60. And um, quite clearly, you can see yesterday, 
This is today, this is yesterday, it was on all day. These were at 60 overnight, so they've held to 40 degrees, which is just kind of tepid water, enough to wash your hands. Um, but when the water gets up to here, not only do I have a shower um, and, and Sarah has a bath, but we also put on the washing machine and the dishwasher because I have them plumbed into hot water, obviously. So for all you out there that don't have to worry about your electric bill, you carry on filling your washing machine and your, your dishwasher with cold water. But you don't need to because most of you make hot water. So why are you putting cold water into a washing machine dishwasher and then using an electric element to heat it up? It's like putting the kettle on for half an hour. Doesn't make any sense. All these machines can be plumbed to hot water. Save your fortune in electric. So if we don't have any hot water, we don't put the washing machine on and we don't use the dishwasher or anything that requires heating of water. And even with the kettle, Sarah will boil the kettle and then she'll put it into a flask so that we use just the bare minimum because our two biggest costs are diesel and electric. I'm sure I've said all this before. I'm starting to bore myself. Anyway, that's it for today. Again, thanks for watching and goodbye.